Hey guys, how's it going? It is Vic with High Desert Man, and uh, I'm having more and more problems every day with my mic and my connector to my phone. I've got to get a new setup. This is driving me nuts. At least I got to buy a new adapter. It's taking me longer and longer to get my uh, mic to finally connect every day. Anyways, uh, we're doing a new cigar review today. This is uh, something I've actually smoked already back in May. And uh, I'm very excited to do this review. It is the new diesel tobacco diesel. It is the new diesel whiskey row PX sherry cask, which was released at the well, we got a preview at the uh, Cigar Fest 2019 and uh, got a box to open. So stick around. All right, guys, how's it going? I've got to be quick here because I've got to jump on a uh, conference call here in just a moment. But real quick, let's talk about this cigar. So this is the follow-up to the original Whiskey Row that came out, uh, what, two years ago, three years ago, something like that. And uh, this one, in my opinion and Lee Mack's opinion, is far better than the first one. So uh, we got an early preview, like I said, at 2019 uh, Cigar Fest. And it sold out extremely fast. They had they were selling five packs. Um, we got the five packs for fifteen bucks, and Lee Mac and I both bought one. Went and sat down, smoked the cigar. We were both like, "Wow, this is way better than the first one." Went to uh, buy some more, and they were completely out, completely out from I don't know how many they had there, but uh, so I ended up getting a total of six because we were given uh, I bought that five pack and then we were given one during the event I smoked one uh, that night that we got them I gave uh, four away and this is the last one so I haven't smoked it since that night and that was May 3rd that that happened uh, the follow-up to the fantastic success of the original whiskey whiskey row and the difference in this one so the the whiskey or uh, rabbit hole makes bourbon um or wait a minute whiskey row what what is it rabbit hole bourbon and their bourbon is called whiskey row i think maybe the just the cigar is called rabbit hole bourbon whiskey row is the name of the cigar Jeez, what the heck whiskey row is the name of the cigar uh aged in rabbit hole uh bourbon barrels now here's the workflow that that was taken on for this one. Uh, barrels that originally contained 30-year-old uh, Pedro Jimenez sherry, Pedro Jimenez, that's where the PX comes from because the X is pronounced like an H. So that's where the PX comes from. So the, the, the barrels contained the 30-year-aged sherry. Then they were sent, the barrels were sent to Rabbit Hole for them to age their bourbon in them. And they actually put their bourbon and wheat mash in uh, the barrels to age their bourbon. Then the barrels, once they were done with that use, the barrels were shipped to Nicaragua to uh, the A.J. Fernandez factory, uh, where the binder, the binder for this is what was aged in the barrels. So this Vitola is the Robusto 5x52, fantastic size. Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper, Barrel aged Brazilian Araparaca binder and Nicaraguan fillers. And like I said, it comes out of Tabacalera AJ Fernandez in Nicaragua. And having had this cigar already, I, you know, we were at the event. There were people, we were, we were shooting a lot of video, talking with people and stuff. So all I can really remember is that this is significantly stronger than the first whiskey roll but uh, I got just a moment I think to get a cut and light here I like the band on this one more it's a purple band instead of the instead of the um, kind of light blue one that the first one had now there is a sweet cherry fruit not sherry, cherry fruit uh, hint to the to the wrapper. 
so that binder is bleeding through there a little bit. It really smells good. It, it almost smells like a piece of uh, Jolly Rancher candy or something. On the foot, it's more of a dark fruit. So where on the, on the body, it's kind of a, maybe just like a cherry Jolly Rancher. On the, on the foot, it's more like a dark cherry. It's been sitting in my uh, Heritage Humidor um, since the show. And I keep that humidor at 65% humidity as opposed to my typical 69. And uh, going for the deep V. Ugh. 65 might be a little dry, guys. I cracked that, uh, cracked that wrapper. Doggone it. Get a load of that wrapper or that label. That label is beautiful. I liked the first one, but the purple just looks a lot more regal than the blue one did. The, the, the barrels contained the 30-year aged sherry. Then they were sent, the barrels were sent to Rabbit Hole for them to age their bourbon in them. And they actually put their bourbon and... bummed out. I kind of I have a little issue with that crack there. I'll just have to be careful. And sorry guys, I can't uh, <clears throat> I can't tell you what's going on with the cigar right now. It's it's spicy and stuff, but I'll I'll come back and give you all my notes when uh, when I return and we open that package. So stick around. Sometimes people use a lot of words to say very little. If you guys think that I do that same thing, because I know I tend to ramble sometimes, leave a comment below. I'm trying to get better about that, but uh, man, mixed mixed feelings for me, particularly on this particular cigar. Uh, I, my humidor, I, I've got to adjust it. It's, I've been leaving it at the desktop humidor, which is a heritage humidor. I've been leaving it 65%. Most of my cigars I've been taking out of there have been good. This one, it's too dry. The wrapper is just, I've really been struggling to care for the wrapper. It is falling apart on me. Now, everything below the band was pretty okay, but up here where I initially cracked it, it's just been, and probably it's been lifting off and falling apart mostly because uh, my hands have been a little bit clammy. Uh, basically what I did was I, I've just been holding the cigar the same way the entire time and and not rolling it or anything and I've been trying to put my lips in exactly the same place every time it's all my fault I'm, I'm not attributing this to the cigar at all but uh, fantastic stick uh, really really good cigar and I remember the one that Lee Mack and I had that night at Cigar Fest. We were really impressed with it. I'm really bummed that uh, this one had problems, but even though I had a lot of problems with it, I did get a lot of flavor out of it. Um, the, now, the one thing I'm concerned about regarding the humidity is the draw on this one was, was tight. And I remember the draw being tight on the one we had at the show, but it wasn't this bad and it wasn't, I didn't have to work it so hard. This one, the draw is pretty bad, and if I was to up the humidity to like 69%, it might make it even tougher. That being said, um, I, I took a lot of notes because this is a complex cigar, and it is a good cigar. Yeah, I'm really kind of struggling. I'm actually going to do the box opening first, and then we'll get into the cigar. Last month was my first month on the Prime 
package for Cigar Authority's care package. And it was amazing. If you remember in that package, one of the cigars I received was a Placencia. That Placencia was a $16 cigar. I also received as my prime selection the Kristoff Pistoff Firecracker, which had just come out. They, they just released that at, and it sold out. It sold out within like a day. Uh, but that cigar was a $7 cigar, so you're already looking at, at uh, 20, 23 bucks, and there were three other cigars in there, which off the top of my head, I don't remember what they were now. I know one of them was a 10-year Perdomo Champagne, 10-year anniversary. That cigar, that cigar is underpriced, but don't tell Nick Perdomo that. Um, that cigar is... I think typically it's somewhere in the 850 range, but it's definitely, definitely like a 10 or 11 dollar stick. Just a fantastic smoke. All right, so for the July package, the cigars that they send out will be cigars featured on the Cigar Authority podcast. Two-hour show. They smoke two cigars, one each hour, and the the four cigars you get in the package will be one uh, of those cigars uh, for each month, uh, week of that month. So Hammer and Sickle, Trademark Churchill. Then for July 13th, the Toscano Antico. Then for July 20th, the Fratella, Fratello Corona. And for July 27th, the La Galera Habano Chavetta. And then the prime selection, the fifth cigar, is the United Series Unitas Hammer and Sickle. That is awesome. I've that's a new that was a collaboration between Hammer and Sickle and United uh, United Brands. United Brands, if I remember correctly, was started, if not owned, by Dave Garofalo, who uh, owns the two guys smoke shops and the. Uh, <clears throat> And the Cigar Authority uh, podcast show. Oh, this is this is actually really interesting. Okay, so let's go in order here. We first we've got the Hammer and Sickle trademark Churchill. So the trademark. There's a funny story behind this. This cigar used to be called the Icon, and. Hammer and Sickle released it and sold it for a couple years as Icon, and then they got sued because uh, for tr trademark uh, infringement. So the owner, who passed away, I believe he passed away last year, unfortunately, um, the owner looked up the word trademark to see if there was a trademark on trademark, which there was not, so he trademarked the word. So the cigar was renamed Trademark, Nothing changed about the blend, uh, but kind of a kind of a cool backstory there. All right, so that's that one. Then the Toscano Antico, this little sort of cheroot-looking guy. And I just watched one of the videos for the IPCPR 2019 uh, show, uh, Half Wheels coverage, and I guess something that's been known about Toscano cigars for some time is you can cut them in half. And uh, because they're dry cured, so uh, they don't require humidity uh, the way that uh, most cigars do. So you can cut them in half, share one with a friend, or smoke one and then smoke one later, whatever. But uh, I'm kind of interested in trying out that whole dry cure um, deal. Then the Fratello, Fratello Corona. I like Fratello cigars, so this should be a, a good one. Uh, let's see. Then we got the La Galera Habano Chavetta. La Galera is is uh, one of Dave Garofalo's brands, if I remember correctly. Nice looking little uh, Robusto there. And then finally, Icon Churchill Single. I'm confused. Hammer and Sickle Trademark Churchill. <clears throat> Hammer and sickle. I'm confused. Maybe I got my. Maybe I got my. The trademark story I told was is an accurate story. 
maybe it wasn't the icon originally maybe it was something else but um, so this is weird because it, this this says for my prime selection I've got the United series Unidas which means United hammer and sickle this one says icon Church Hill single and none of these are the oh unless I guess it's possible that this that it was the icon this is one of the original bandings uh, one of the original sticks, which man, if that's if that's the case, then this cigar has this cigar has to have at least three years of age on it already. Very interesting. In all the clubs I've seen, the value in the in the care package is always you're always getting a lot more for your money than you do in other clubs, and I've seen that over and over again over the years. All right, so the cigar. I might have gone out here. Guys, I apologize if my for the sound quality in my videos lately. Um, I'm really kind of stuck for a little while. I'm saving up for a new camera and mic setup. Um, but it, it's going to be a little while because uh, it's, it's quite a bit of money. And uh, it's just going to be a while. Okay, so at the initial light, what you get off of this cigar is just nice dark flavors. I got uh, a smoky oak flavor, mild cayenne pepper, and uh, and then a, a little bit of a uh, dark roast coffee in it. And behind uh, or underneath all of that, you get the sort of that tannic flavor of a, of a dark fruit skin, like maybe a dark cherry skin or something. That's got to be coming from the sherry. And it's just, it's really subdued, but you definitely can pick it out. All right, at about a half inch in, um, that, that's where I, I made a note that there, there might be just a hint of dark fruit in the smoke as you draw it into your mouth, but it was more pronounced in the finish. So the, this cigar has a nice long finish. The finish is interesting because the finish transitions. You get, um, you, you get that dark fruit kind of throughout the finish but it starts the finish starts off with just dark earth flavors smoky uh, wood like an oak like I said uh, and then it starts to taper off and as it tapers off the dark fruit kind of becomes more pronounced and the, and there's a bit of um, cayenne and black pepper although the the peppers in this cigar are underneath all the other flavors. At the end of the first third, uh, the finish started transitioning to a dark, or I'm sorry, a dry wheat toast. Uh, and it was in the finish. So the finish, uh, the finish is nice and long. And it's at, right at the beginning of the finish, you get this, uh, the, the flavors I've mentioned, just the uh, oakiness, um, some dark, rich earth flavors and stuff, but then it was transitioning into a dry wheat toast. The body, it's got a full body. It coats the mouth well. The, the smoke just kind of, everything just kind of coats your mouth and coats your tongue and everything. Not so much that I, I, it was making me thirsty. And, and then about the halfway point, the cigar starts to develop a creaminess. And this was really hard for me to, to pinpoint. The creaminess mixed with that dark fruit flavor reminds me of amaretto creamer in coffee. Um, that's about it, guys. I mean, really, I think, I think that when my uh, five packs come in, I will store these uh, at 69% humidity, see how that does. But... Uh, Man, for the price, it is a good, good cigar. I know a couple people didn't care for the first one, for the first whiskey row. Don't let that stop you from trying this one because it is, it is a very different experience. I think you get a lot more of the barrel-aged flavor in this cigar. It's a, it's a stronger cigar, but it's also a, a lot more flavor. But um, this has been the... Whiskey Row PX Sherry Cask in the Robusto size 5x52.
I definitely, definitely recommend this cigar for you guys. And uh, until the next one, guys, stay rugged.